Svalbard is an archipelago situated in the Arctic Ocean, midway between continental Norway and the North Pole. The Norwegian sovereign islands are the northernmost settlement in the world, home to just 2,000 people. And aside from a small number of researchers and tourists hoping to spot a polar bear, few people know of this place. Yet Svalbard actually plays a pivotal role in ensuring humanity's continual survival. So why exactly is this place so important? It's because of this, the Svalbard Global Seed Vault, sometimes referred to as the Doomsday Vault. Set 120 meters inside a mountain, this secure underground facility is capable of storing up to 2.25 billion seeds, collected from 4.5 million crop varieties around the world. Basically, what lies behind these metal doors is the ultimate insurance policy for the entire planet's food supply. I always get this feeling of going into a cathedral when I get there. It's just so amazingly quiet and uh, you get this divine feeling. It's a history of agriculture in there and it's potentially also the future of agriculture in there. So, to me, a very, very special place. That was Marie Hager, Executive Director of the Global Crop Diversity Trust, the organization that manages the vault. Since it opened in 2008, the Trust has collected, catalogued and stored 860,000 seed samples deposited by gene banks from across the planet. Those are huge repositories that preserve genetic material. Russian seeds and Ukrainian seeds are literally on the same shelf. Yes, there are seeds from South Korea, from North Korea, well, basically from all over the world. The seeds sit in three cold storage rooms kept at a constant minus 18 degrees Celsius. The cool temperature ensures that the seeds remain viable for decades and in some cases thousands of years, just in case the gene banks who donated them ever need them again. And ultimately, that is one of the major reasons why the vault was set up in the first place. While there are around 1,700 gene banks in the world, these facilities can be vulnerable to things like political instability natural disasters, and war. And if the seeds inside these banks become compromised, the loss can pose a significant threat to global food security. Ideally, we want to have a copy of each accession in every gene bank in the world in Svalbard. Because uh, we can hope that things don't go wrong in the world, but occasionally things do go wrong. And, and we have lost complete gene banks. We have lost gene banks in Iraq. We have lost gene banks in Afghanistan. Um, the gene bank in the Philippines was first struck by a tsunami. And then it was, um, then it caught fire. Um, so um, it's just illustrations of why it is important to have a backup system. Until recently, no one had ever put this system to the test, but that all changed with the outbreak of war in Syria. So one of the most important dream banks in the world is in Aleppo in Syria. Due to the war situation, the dream bank cannot operate as it, as it should. The seeds are safe, um, but the land around the dream bank cannot be used, so they can't duplicate seeds, they can't share seeds with farmers and breeders and scientists. The gene bank in Aleppo held ancient varieties of wheat and durum that dated back to the dawn of agriculture some 10,000 years ago. Essentially, hundreds of crop varieties that had taken thousands of years to cultivate were at stake. Losing these crops would have proved devastating for global food security. So in September 2015, the Global Seed Vault received an urgent request from Aleppo, asking them to make a withdrawal. And we have then been working with uh, the gene bank in Aleppo for quite a few years now. And almost all of their collections are copied in uh, Svalbard. They decided um, to take seeds out of the vault in, in Svalbard and then re-establish the gene bank. Um, so you will see in the vault that there are some holes in the racks. There should have been some boxes there. So the seeds quite simply have been shipped back or have been shipped then to Morocco and, and Lebanon. A total of 128 crates of seeds holding around 30,000 samples of wheat, barley, lentil and chickpea among others were removed. But the seeds couldn't be sent back to war-torn Syria. 
Instead, the samples were shipped to Morocco and Lebanon until they were able to re-establish the gene bank in Syria. They're being grown out there now. Um, so they will re-establish the gene banks there. And um, when they have the first yields, they then will send seeds again back to Svalbard. While the seed bank in Svalbard isn't the only solution to global food security, it is reassuring to know that seed varieties from all parts of the globe are being held here, safe and secure, ready to be used in the next time of crisis. And now with Aleppo, we have seen that the Svalbard Global Seed World works as it should. When things go wrong, it is possible to go to the world, retrieve the material and then re-establish the collections.